More than half of Belize's population lives in rural settings, culturally vibrant towns, serene seaside villages, or verdant family farms. These 170,000 men, women, and children, mostly of Maya, Garifuna, Creole, Mestizo, and East Indian descent, play a vastly overlooked role in the diversified national economy. Official poverty assessment data indicate that the poverty rate for rural residents is actually double the rate of urban dwellers, and just over half the people in rural areas fall below the poverty line. The base of the economy must therefore be broadened to provide a greater space for rural residents to participate more meaningfully in wealth creation and the national economy. The primary objective of Belize Rural Development Program BRDP is to promote this kind of economic expansion. The beneficiaries of BRDP do reflect on the benefits and challenges of rural life. I came here, I was, according to them, I was three months old. You know, I was transferred from one village uh, in 1941. So they brought us here, that said here to settle this uh, area. So I grew up here uh, since 1941. I grew up here under the stars and the moon and the sun. <laughs> and life was great. Life was great living in a village. Well, I love Lucky Shrike. I love the peace of mind we have. I love the, 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 the people they I love the the, 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 the the fresh air where they breathe. You there always you know gonna do your run go to a pan and you hit your line if you even catch the lamb you scrape it and you fry it and you eat it if you want. I know key how big it big once you go ahead the fish. Sweet life I never like it when I did grow up telling you the truth. Until when I meet my husband, you know where I tell her? Babe, I don't wanna leave the town. Come leave the village with me. So he may find it difficult first, but gradually get used to it and he live, he love it now. You can't tell about city. I grew up in um, Jacintoville and I lived here in Cat Landing for 10 years. And to me, village life is, is, is better than living in a town because you can, in the villages, I have um, a nice family setting. I have a yard where my children can go and play. And I like it here in the villages. It's a peaceful life because as we, as I grew up, for example, I would say, I lived at my grandparents' place, well, I love with my father and my family. We grew up in a, in a farm and that is, that has been more of like an interest to me to live within nature. Village life is very sweet. Very, very sweet. Originally, I was born in Belize City, right? My parents were Angela and Gregorio Heredia. But because of Hurricane Hattie, we, my dad had already bought the place out here. So because of Hurricane Hattie, we migrated out here. I migrated at the age of 16 years old. So I, I live out here um, from 1961, from Hurricane Happy. And um, I got married at the age of 18 years old to one Alan Jones. And then I end up with six kids. I had seven kids, but one died two years and five months, and I have six left, two boys, four girls. 
I think I have 18 grandchildren, about three, about six great grand, something like that. I made up my mind that this is it. Here we have to have, we have to call home. We are, uh, we are feeling difficult living in San Jose because we live far. We no got current. We no got better roads. That's why we, little bit, um, sometimes we feel it hard in our life because sometimes we need some things like a lot of things like sun or everything we want it sometimes it's really hard to come if you want to build a house well right now we still don't have running water but it's on the way um, the electricity about 11 years now we had electricity run here but before that we used to have a generator and we only use the generator when night comes and when you're ready to go to bed you turn off the generator so that only use at night so apart from that we never really miss the electricity because we still used to have light when night comes in the village you don't have like internet and here at town there is more like internet and more service i think it's better because like less corruption less crime you can focus more on your studies and less distractions. Living in Lucky Strike, it's a very peaceful community. You know, we, you know, um, get along very good. You know, we have, you know, it's like a family then. We come, we go out for each other, we help each other. I said it's a, it's not a big community. We are consists of 304 people to be exact living here in um, Lucky Strike. You know, we have 43 you know um houses here and something like 48 families that live in this community and it's it's a really you know nice community we are out we we have like um easily 5,000 people in independence right now we have like just under 2,000 voters so our schools are full to capacity, they are overflowing. So I think we are a growing community. We have um, the tourist um, ships that will be coming in, maybe in the next two years from now. And um, it, it's a community that you, you, you could never underestimate. It's growing and growing and growing daily. Chinese are coming in and over face. And we could safely say that yes, it is a big plus to our village. When I came here, it was a village of like maybe um, 18, 20 people when everybody, all the other companies move out. The Lee's estate was the last one to go. We had, I mean, it was practically a tongling with the amount of people and turnover that was here. Hercules and the banana industry that started and collapsed and, and started again, revived in 1971, and um, from then on to today, it's a urban business for independence and all the surrounding villages. And the EU has been more than helpful in every aspect of where they can help in the banana industry. We have received subsidies from the EU. Banana has now become a commodity that people eat and it, it's, a, it's one of the most eatable fruit in the world right now. It has even surpassed apples. Banana was the number one last year, consumption-wise. Farming is everything right now. Living in a rural area, you need to have, like you see, I have my chickens. And we do a bit of fishing in the dry season whenever the water goes down. And it's like that here in the village, survival, you know. I do construction work too. Farming decreased because of the highway, education. Everybody finds themselves going working from maybe a, a eight to five job, eight to five job, and that's what they do to survive. So you go around Cookie Tree Village, if you find 10 people raising chickens, it's a lot. And every household used to have the same. That's the difference with it now. First thing, I work in the community because I'm a community health worker. So I do my community health working job. 
and I'm also I live with a farmer because that's what we do for a living we do farming so we get up in, in the morning I have to take care of the pigs I mean of the, if Mike is not around but whenever he's around he would help me to take care of whatever you know like the chicken we have to feed them give them water feed, feed the other animals taken care of and we do a lot of things because we even make oil. We have some coconut, we do coconut oil, we do kuhun oil. We do a little of everything as a farmer. First thing when I wake up in the morning, we go and I go and feed the chickens. Check them that everybody's okay. I deal with the first, the hatcheries, the one that sets the baby chicks. Then I go and deal with the big chicks. Then about 12 o'clock I go and check again if their water is okay, collect eggs. Then evening about five o'clock, let them out of the run so they can come outside in the yard and feed on the grass. I pick up eggs. Then in the night, about seven, eight o'clock, I go and check them, count them, see everybody in the, in the coop. Then I close them up for the night. I have right now about 75 chickens, with small and big. Like right now we are doing the cashew, which is for the first six months. I think March we start to work on it, we're still working with the cash on. So which is another that? income with the chicken. I we collect the fruits, we sell the fruits, we sell the juice. The nuts we store them up for right now, we are doing the nuts. The fruit, we sell it just natural or we stew it, we make jam, we make jelly. The cashew juice we sell them. Everything. You work for yourself. Which most of us, as you see, is in Bobbin. We work for ourselves, so it's like you know, um, you come to work um, like four or five hours, six hours the most. You could go back home, and before and after in the morning, you could do breakfast for your family and go back home in the evening and stuff like that. It's, it's very convenient. Although we have our highs and you know, lower seasons, um, it's, it's like um, your own bath. Well, growing up on a farm, it's fun. You get to make a lot of noise if you're playing music. You can, you have a big yard and stuff. In otherwise, living in the town, you have certain hours. You, you can't make noise and stuff. There's no wildlife, probably in the town. You know, back there we can do our farming. We can plant veggies, um, fruits. We can have them close by the house and stuff. And you're breeding fresh air at the farm and not only to the air out there. I like my village because of the productive land that they have and the people, the kind people and, and they, they love to work together. We had farmland and then we started out farming. We plant our vegetables that we could have planted. We could plant rice, corn and so on. Those are the basic food that we have that we, we are going here. I grew up with, with my father here in Antonio, in the, in the jungle. Um, he is a farmer and he do his own farming, don't have no job. So that's why it's kind of hard for us, or for him to send us to school. But we, he try his best and that's how we get our education from primary to secondary schools only. He encouraged me to do farming, so that's why I do farming right now, and I have my own cacao field. I have my two farmers here in San Antonio growing cacao. Um, and my father is one of them. So, as a farmer, we also do our milpa. We do corn, rice, beans, and we also grow plantain, bananas, and other fruit trees. Yeah, like right now, the biodiversified field I have with lone timber trees, some wood, mahogany, cedars coconut, all in kind of citrus plant, oranges, tangerine, and all of them are right there. And when I am a boy, I, I used to, to work along with my father because there is no school in the Alquilo, just only in farming. But afterwards, when my father came in San Antonio, I am 11 years old when we when we reached the village of San Antonio, then I, I started school. And after that, um, 11 and then 14 years, I'm out of school again. When we came here, my father started his farm here. He, we, we chopped the, the high bush and then 
plant rice and then after that we start to plant cacao and then after that when I, when I, I grow maybe I'm 19 years old well I, I decide to, to find my wife and then 20 or 21 I, I came to live here um, I, I, I came here from 1977 then I started to plant my cacao field but the same I, as I see with my father I, I cut down the bush and then I burn it and then I plant corn, rice and then after that I, I planted um, cacao among the rice and the corn and then I plant um, banana and planting for the shade. Then I moved to find a job in Belize City, then worked there for nine years. Then I decided to come back at Santona again. The difference is that um, when you're there at um, Belize City, you know, you have to buy things, you know, like village is different. Village and city is totally different. The thing is, all what you need to eat and so you have to buy at, at Belize City and then in, or any village, I mean, town or city you go, you have to. Nothing like in the village, you know. There's definitely more advantage living on a farm because you can do your own sustainable farming. You know, sustainable, like in terms of, you can do a little garden to grow your, your peanuts and, and sometimes you can grow your sweet peppers, your tomatoes, you can grow a lot of you know, little vegetables just to sustain the family. And for every crop season you can change and, and maybe of course it, a little help from another job would help. You know, like maybe you work at a resort or work for somebody else and when you come home on your days off, weekend, you have your family also that maybe will, well if you want you can teach them to, to take care of the, the farm and thing. And but then when you go to work and then when you come back you can also work there and so I would say that village village life in a farm is far better than than living you know around a lot of people <laughs> I grew up here and I have all my family here my like my sisters my brothers uncles and whatever yeah all of the family live mostly in the village. We see that we are Mayan. The story that we heard, that I have heard, that Yucatec Maya people, um, our old ancestors came from Mexico. They fled from Mexico coming to Belize. But I think that when, when San Antonio started, there was just like um, 11 families that started this village. I think the population of San Antonio is over a 3,000. I'm 15 years old right now and I feel happy to live in San Antonio the village because here's a lot of places like to go on having a walk with my friends and other things. When I grow up I want to work, find a work and maybe go out of the village. Actually, no, I'm planning to move out to town. Uh, it's closer for me to come to work and stuff. You have everything closer. Although I'm pretty much gonna miss the farm, you know. It's really nice at the farm. For the past two years now, what I'm doing, I'm trying to do, see if I could um, sustain myself. But um, living in the area here, in our village, it's far from the town and the cities, um, it's really um, hard working, I mean, um, living here because you will um, find out that going out of the village, we are, you, you take a bus from here because we have two buses here. Uh, it's really uh, a very um, challenging situation to be traveling because the road conditions, some of the times, um, at, at, at right now the, whole, the road is kind of all right, but last year, the road is very bad and uh, you have to wake up early in the morning to catch a um, 
any one of the bosses. The first boss leaves at 3 30 in the morning and the second one goes at about four. Yeah, and that's all we have just two buses. They leave PG again at um, one at eleven thirty, next one at twelve. Uh, you have to come back because there's no other bus after that. If you get left, you can come back. If you get left, well, you can catch a bus going to Santa Cruz through the highway now, and you come out by Santa Cruz, and you walk the the bypass, they call it, between just that way, San Santa Cruz and San Jose, which is um, two and a half miles. It's not um, if you are not used to walking, you will feel the, the up and down because you have some big hills, up and down hills. Sometimes the road is so bad we can't get out. When the weather is very bad, well, we can't even come out from village to come to town. The, yeah, the road is smoldy. Sometimes we get stuck there and it washes away and it gets flooded. We have to wait until the water comes down so that we can make it. Even as a nurse when I work, in fact, I was transferred to the um, Rockfield Hospital for that reason because I couldn't get to work really on time as I wanted to. I spent most of my life in the rural era. I went to Belize when I started high school. And then I, during holiday time, I go back to the rural. And when I graduated from high school, then I still came back home and I'm there up to now. I went to the Anglican Cathedral College. I general studies and I went back to the rural era because it's I just enjoy living up there with all the nature and things. I didn't really like the city life. Our high school students sleep here before we have to sleep in the Angriga town when you go to high school. You have to sleep in the Angriga, uh, stay there and you will only come home maybe on weekends or during the days but now since we have the road uh, we have the buses running the students from here every day so they do not have to sleep in somebody else's home growing up in this village was rough times good times all sorts of things uh, for, for one going to school we never live on this side we used to live over the river if you can notice the river running between, we spend like 20 odd years over that side. Then going to school, we got to wake up in the morning, use a dory, walk to school, and the road was just Picardo Road, not road like this, just some little trails to go to school. And when we come back in the evening, my grandfather used to do farming, so we have to come home, go to plantation, plant some things for him, go back home, do your homework, drink your tea, and drink your tea before night. And um, you couldn't be out late at night, because they don't want you to be out late at night. So when you're the out late, your tea chance will come outside and make them all know. <laughs> <laughs> when I came here, there was no electricity, no running water, no TV, so it was like, you want to say a poor way of life, but a happier way of living, because you had the huge sea in front of you, the people are friendly, everything is homegrown, all the stuff are going, people going to the farm, neighborhood like in Corsal, you don't know your neighbors, your neighbors don't know you. Here, it's that neighborly way of living. Now going from here to Chicago was a big shock. First of all, it's a huge city. You have to be on the go every single day. Um, there's no relaxing. If you don't go to work, there's no you don't make any money. One, it was cold, <laughs> you freeze compared to and the third thing was coming back and making something of Hopkins and that's what we did. I came back home. A lot of people say, why are you going home? This is all good life in Chicago. But well, why would I want to stay there when this is home? People are still stick to their traditional uh, way of life, um, fishing. Now it is basically diversified with, with the tourism industry. Uh, a lot of it, a lot of the people here are employed um, in the tourism industry, whether directly or indirectly for the most part, um, directly. Uh, but life here is, it's fairly smooth and people enjoy Hopkins. 
Uh, leisure time, people still spend time playing their little dominoes, playing sports and things like that. So. In the village, it is the best place to raise your children, but required. Things happen, but it is a much more on a smaller scale than in the city. Um, it is much more healthier in the village, you know, it is calmer and, like I said, healthier generally. We, we want to drink wee bush tea. You don't have to drink it every day. But I mean, we know we're good for we. For instance, I diagnosed with cholesterol and uh, triglycerin. But I can't, I have over two years I know going back to the doctor. I'm not boasting, but we're happy. I do my um, home remedy. I drink my, I drink my garlic, I drink my vinegar. You, you know you're not busy to eat fatty food, you're not eat fatty food. Why are you a fool yourself? Scotland Half Moon, um, like for my family then, we have this farm and most of what we do are right from the farm. Um, we eat, we right, right, right from the farm, we make with backyard garden. You eat the, you grow the local chickens, you eat that, you grow the sheep, you eat that. Like most of the time if you have a party or so, the well, sheep or get it. <laughs> yeah. Um, these days, a lot of people eh, get into the goats. Yeah, they make curry goat and even for party and thing, a lot of goats then come out. And I'm not comfortable living anywhere else than Hopkins because I love being free. Because here I can go. In my community, I can go anywhere, any part of the night, any time I wanted to. But in, um, in the city, it, it is not the same. There is too much violence around. I, I like my village life because I don't hear no gunshot. I could sleep, I could lift my bath pan and my clothes on the line and sleep so good. That's the reason why I love my village life. And everything we get from the farm is fresh. Fresh to eat. So morning I get up, I don't have to run, go buy nothing, everything. I chef up something, because I like to cook. In the morning I would get up, I go in my garden, I would pick my spinach. I have my chicken, local chicken, the eggs that is so much nicer than the other eggs. And you know you could kill, get up and you, you don't have, have anything to eat, you would go and kill a few, and a few of your local chicken. And it's much, it's so organic because we try to be as organic as we could. Because in my garden I don't want to use any fer fertilizer. I use the chicken, the chicken dung, to, the chicken stool to do, my, to do the fertilizing. We make our own pesticide because I use the cashew vinegar as a weed killer so you know we got we do a lot of, of things that we use right here that we don't have to buy. Um, why I love the farm is because um, of the freedom you have no? and um, the fresh fruits and milk and meat and you know, the, the, the flavor is just different when you when you go and buy stuff from the town it's from the city it's all stale and the flavor is far different from fresh products. Probably with me and my family we own over 100 acres of land no? and um, we have different sites, different sites. We have access to the river, we have access to the to, to, um, to the to the forest, you know, we go, we, we, we go fishing, we go hunting, we go just nature walk. No? Um, I think it, now things are changing um, in terms of the lifestyle where uh, we had at one time people used to spend time reading or involved in community activities you now because of television and all of that uh, people spend more time basically at home as well so there are internet cafes here um, people as well have their own home internet so people are are in, in tune to the world um, as we speak um, we are finding out that uh, we have road yes uh, people find employment people afford to pay them um, pay their uh, bills because of the rules, so we have uh, employment going on in the community. So the work uh, that road there now, we'll see more people coming into this community, and we need to have more businesses because now I'm not making good business. But when that road is better than how it is, 
I will I think I will make more money before I die. <laughs> I will sell more drums.